Uh, Patreon members, we are back with the great Michael Beschloss. You make this content possible. Thank you for fueling the work. I have a special treat for you. Michael's going to stick around for a couple minutes more to answer some of the questions that we ask every guest um, that are different than what we've been talking about. Uh, Michael, the, the first on the list is something we ask of everyone that I can't wait to hear your answer for. Michael Beschloss, what was your very first car? very first car was a brown Audi with a stick shift, which, believe it or not, uh, I had it at Williams College, which for the very few people on earth who don't know Williams College is small college, 2,200 people, Northwest Massachusetts. Uh, and there was a splinter that went off from there of faculty and students that started Amherst College where you went. And so I used to use that car sometimes, even to drive down to Amherst uh, just to sort of ask when the Amherst people would be bringing our books back, because part of the lore, as you know, is that uh, this this splinter movement led to Amherst College uh, was done in the middle of the night. And there are even people who think, as you know, Paul, that some Amherst teachers stole our books and they've never come back. This is part part of the list, so that the books might be in your in your car somewhere. Uh, well, I my car my trunk was available to take them back from Amherst College, but no one offered to give them up. So may, maybe it's in the Rykoff basement. Uh, <laughs> did this did this uh, did this car have a name? I always ask them folks name their cars. Did you have a name? Yeah, it did. Uh, I think I hope I could do better now. It was called Otto. Uh, a a woman I knew called it. Otto the Audi out Otto. Uh, I'm so glad so I asked. If, if anyone doesn't tune out after hearing that, then uh, I'm so we, you know we have to do a maybe we can do a special podcast on the history of the Sabrina. I don't know if you know about the Sabrina, this great statue at Amherst that would disappear and reappear. It uh -huh. once appeared from a helicopter over a football game. It was this great stealing of the statue, and there's all that kind of stuff that is uh -huh. kind of fascinating for any historian. But. We're going to all need a drink after this last couple of weeks. What is your drink of choice? If we meet at the what used to be called the Lord Jeff and Amherst and I were to buy you a cocktail or a drink, what is your drink of choice, Mike? Oh, in those days, probably a screwdriver. Uh, and unlike Amherst College, yes, there were people at Williams College who tended to, to drink a little bit too much. Uh, our, we have a song that's not the school hymn, but sort of a sports song which begins, come fill your glasses up to Williams. And I found that was pretty true during my time there. And you and yours is a screw. I love it. Screwdriver is, is, is just such a classic that I don't feel like I see that often. I drink them all. Right. Often. Well, well, it's, you know, historian, it's a little bit of a throwback. And the other thing is that one reason is, you know, that all those professors and students left Williams and started Amherst, which is slightly to the south, is that they thought the climate was too cold. So if, if you're drinking a screwdriver, which is probably fairly tropical, you're sort of defying, defying the elements if you're in the Berkshires <laughs> in the uh, middle of the winter. And it'll protect you from scurvy. So you'll, yes. be, you'll be good, right? Uh, okay. Worked so far. Uh, is it, I know you're such a well-read man. You're, you're a great author. Is there something you've been watching, a, a series or a television show that you uh, have enjoyed or a film that you would recommend to folks that they that they enjoy when they need a break from all this politics? Yes, uh, I would recommend that great folk classic, Curb Your Enthusiasm, yes. which uh, my son who was called home from college during the pandemic and my wife and I, we were in the same house together for almost two years, which was generally a pleasure. And we saw every episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm, I think, uh, Late Larry Day that can bring even a smile to your face if you're living through a period like that when people were in great danger of getting sick and in some cases dying, but also politically, what were we going through in 2020? So th that was pretty good. Uh, the other thing I did could you see when Vindman appeared when 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 Colonel Vindman appeared on I, on Curb Your Enthusiasm was I did I did a wonderful his book. weird treat. Right. Yeah. No, I thought that was very nice. I assume because Larry David admires him and wanted to help both him right. and the book, which is a very good book. The other story I've got for you is that I was once at a party where the hosts, this was on Long Island, 
lived in a house with a lot of rooms and and put people up. So I was put in a up in a room with Tom Brokaw. Uh, everyone had roommates, so he was my my roommate. And so this was had to be twenty years ago almost. And so I pulled out of before going to sleep. You know, we're both lying down, about to go to sleep in this room, and. I pulled out a CD just to uh, DVD just to to date this completely and put it in in my little machine and put the headphones on. So Tom, who was such a, a kindly person, says, "Oh, Michael, I'm so impressed. You know, we've been to this party. It's late at night, and you're probably you know watching some historical documentary as part of your research." And I held up the box for the DVD, which was. The Sopranos year three. Great choice. Great choice. I have to share you just based off our, our, our curb uh, conversation. One of I, I we could talk about Twitter probably for a whole episode, but for one sure. of the great interactions I've had, you and I interact often on Twitter, which I really enjoy. And it's Love one it. of the things I think I've been very lucky to get to know Richard Lewis on Twitter. Yes, I have too. I mean, out of nowhere. I hear a lot from him, I'll bet. Yeah. I thought it was, yeah, I do, but I thought it was an Amherst friend messing with me. I'm like, is this really Richard Lewis? And it's Richard Lewis. And so I hope he will join us on the podcast. I know he's going wonderful. Some health issues, but he's going to join us. And he's just and had I, his 70th uh, birthday, I think. I'm sorry? Just a, uh, had his 70th birthday. I, I, that, I will have to celebrate that for sure. Okay. But last question, uh, the one that we, we try to bring folks together on this show, Michael. We, we try to bring light to contrast to heat uh, and offer alternatives. But there is one question that divides America fiercely that I ask of all of our guests. There is no middle ground. There's no third party option. You must choose one or the other. Michael Beschloss, pancakes or waffles? Oh, I'd say waffles. Uh and that's sort of Northern Illinois. Uh, and that also has a historical connection, naturally. I have to connect everything to dead people. Uh, do you know what the favorite food at the 1964 New York World's Fair was? Was it the ice cream cone? Or what well, was... you're getting close. It was Belgian waffles. Oh, yeah. Uh, and so that's not the reason I was eating waffles, but I was... Mm. Eight, eight years old or something like that so i felt i was doing this in a very important historical tradition of what's popular at world fairs I, were you at that world fair no i i would have loved to go <laughs> uh, in those days uh i did not travel that much and uh our point of view was you're living in, in illinois in the midwest where else is there to go <laughs> well, you've you've done them proud, and you've gone many places. If I don't know if there's a, an equivalent of an America's Fair, but if there was, and they needed a a chairman, I think there would be no better choice than you to to cultivate and curate uh, all the the goodness of America in one event. I would I would love we'd, to we'd love to go together, and we'll take our families. And Richard Lewis. <laughs> and Richard Lewis. Richard, I hope you're watching and listening. <laughs> My friend, the great Michael Beschloss, thank you for sticking around, for joining our Patreon members. Thank you for supporting this work. Please share it with your friends, share this conversation and tell them to join us. The great Michael Beschloss, thank you, my friend. Thank you. Thank God for Paul. Everyone <laughs> watching and listening will agree with that too. Thank you so much for including me. Thank you, my friend.